Cursor 1.0 just dropped. What does that mean for us vibe coders, AI developers, chat oriented programmers, whatever you want to call yourself these days? Do any of the new features deserve your attention and will they inevitably help you move faster in your AI and app development workflows? We've got bug detection, background agents, memories and rules, and one feature I think is going to be my fast favorite. So thanks to tools like Cursor, Windsurf, Bolt and Lovable, you can now prototype and build apps 10x faster without writing any code. In my course and community, I'm working with entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs from Meta, Microsoft, Amazon and more, learning how to upskill in AI development and launch new products in record time. So if you haven't been paying attention, you might have missed a subtle shift in AI development workflows. We're used to agents writing and editing code as pair programmers synchronously, but now we're increasingly seeing the idea of peer programmers or asynchronous programmers, where we set these tasks in motion, either through issues or requests or background agents, and we go about doing other things. I don't recommend this for beginners, just get used to working with one model at a time, but I'm starting to use this workflow increasingly on my more advanced projects. The caveat is these agents still make plenty of mistakes and I find the best way to work with them is in a supervised manner when you can see what's going on. But this new development for cursor means you can actually see and keep an eye on what's happening in the virtual server. And you can do the same with GitHub Copilot, something I covered in a previous video. Setting up background agents is actually pretty easy. You go to background agents here in cursor settings. You can reach that up in the top right. So let's click on background agents here. So not a requirement, but you can set up an environment file and that is a JSON file which has all the instructions for setting up your specific environment. So when you set up your local machine, you have to install Node, you have to install Git, all those various different packages. You might want to include those instructions specifically here if you have a particularly unique environment. You need to give the background agent access to your GitHub. So that means that it can clone down your repository, it can create branches and push and pull all the things that you want to do in terms of pull requests and a typical workflow. So it runs a basic environment. This is Ubuntu and you can actually use a Docker file if you're familiar with Docker to spin it up exactly the way you want. But if it's pretty simple, you can actually opt to set up the machine interactively. So if I click on this and what I've got here is a starter kit with Next.js, Shad, CN, Superbase, Prisma, Neon, etc., all set up, ready to go. It's part of the community. If you want to join, it really helps you get started quickly with your projects. So essentially it's connected to that GitHub. Um, it's created a machine snapshot. So I can then decide to, okay, I need to install my node modules. I need to run my server. Maybe there's some other kind of linting configuration or test setup that I want to put in place if I haven't set up a Docker file. And then when I'm happy, I can basically take a snapshot. So that means that our environment is going to be launched at the point in time where you've got everything set up. What you should have then essentially is a background environment that is ready to run. So to get started with background agents, just click this little button up here, the little cloud, and it says show background agents. The chat interface here is just like the traditional one. You type in whatever you want in terms of a prompt. You can see here that you can select whichever model that you want to use. They all default to the max setting, which is the maximum context and actually the maximum cost. I think that's fixed in place for now and it might change in the future. So just bear in mind that these background agents are going to cost you a little bit more in the short term. You can select what branch you're using. Again, if you're working with AI, I highly recommend you use branching in Git so that when you're creating a new feature or you're adding something in, you create that branch, you work on it. If something goes horribly wrong or spaghetti code shows up, you can revert back in time or if it's successful, you can just save those changes or commit them and then merge them back into the main. Just a safe way to work with AI, especially when you get to production. You can set up an environment JSON and that's pretty cool because you can set up how the environment should be run, save that, and then other people in your team can actually copy down that environment and use the same one. So by environment, I mean, when we run this background agents, it's not going to run on our system. It's going to be run in the cloud, just like a code space in GitHub or VS Code. GitHub actually has something very similar. So when we run this agent, it's going to run in a virtual environment 
in the cloud. So technically we can spin up like seven or eight of these agents all at once if you could manage that and have them doing various different tasks. But bear in mind, it is gonna cost you quite a bit because we're incurring tokens um, as, as, as these are being run. So you can see here, I can see other uh, agents that have run in the past or are currently running. I could click on one of those and I get this interface. So essentially this is a view into my cloud environment. This is not my cursor local agent. This is the cloud agent, but it's got a very similar interface. So what's cool here, if I check in on it running is I can actually interject with the model and help it out if it gets stuck. And then it'll give me a review of what's being changed and I can go and create a pull request. So you've got the main branch and that's where all the production code is. It's where the app is. And then we come along with a feature branch. It's a change that we want to make. And essentially what we're doing is we're asking that our branch or the changes that we've made to the code base be merged into the main branch or the dev branch in some cases. And then the person that owns that repository, it could still be you or another agent, or it could be somebody else on your team, reviews the code and then pushes it to the branch. In a second, I'm gonna show you how Cursor's new bug bot and also GitHub Copilot help with checking the pull request to make sure that they're error free before they go and get pushed to production. So the other addition that we've got is the bug bot. And you remember there was a bug finder that used to exist in Cursor as well. And to be honest, I never really used it. The idea was that you set it running on your code base and it worked through to see what bugs it could find and then offered fixes for them. In this case, it seems to have changed to something called a bug bot with a slightly different setup. So the idea is if you have a pull request on your repository, so that's somebody else saying, hey, I've got some changes that I wanna make. It's gonna check and see if there's any problems or errors in the merge before you actually take them in. So what does that look like? in terms of workflow. To enable Bugbot, you need to go to cursor.com dashboard, go to integrations. You need to manage all your GitHub connections and then any repositories that you wanted to work on, you need to switch those on. So in my web app starter kit, I decided that I wanted to remove the danger zone card on the settings page. So I could create that as an issue. There seems to be a trend towards creating lots of issues around your project, and then you can actually go and assign them to your co-pilots. Now I don't see the ability to assign cursor agent here yet. I think that's something you might have to enable or it's something that needs to get integrated. But in a previous video, I showed how if you've got multiple issues built up, you could just assign your GitHub Copilot to go and work on those. And to be honest, I've actually found it quite useful and quite powerful. It's doing quite a good job and it'll be hard for Cursor to compete in this area. We've got the issue there. So I made some changes to the code and I submitted my pull request. Before the Cursor bug bot got a chance to even jump in, I forgot that I had Copilot engaged as a reviewer and essentially it jumped in and solved the problem straight away. I had intentionally put in a little character as a problem and, and Copilot picked up on that straight away. I'm assuming Budbot would have done the same. Anyway, Cursor jumped in and said, yeah, I've checked through this. There's no errors because they've already been fixed here. You're good to go ahead. And so then I could go and merge my pull request and then that would be all complete. Obviously, you're either going to use the cursor agent or the co-pilot agent because I'm testing all of them at the same time. I've got them all engaged. Again, if you're a beginner and you're just building out prototypes, I wouldn't worry too much about these asynchronous agents. This is really kind of a power play when you get used to using Git, when you get used to using agents and you want to just move a whole lot faster. Don't be overwhelmed by this if you're just starting out. So the next feature worth looking at is memories. So if you're a Windsurf user, you'll know that memories has been something that's existed since the start. So as an example here on the memories, I just said, remember never to ask me to run the development server. It always does that, you know, when the server is running already, it's not aware of that and I find it annoying. So I'm saying, don't do that in future. And it's telling me the memory is updated. So you can see here the differentiation. These are all just rules. Memories are essentially just rules. The difference is I can add project rules like I used to be able to. I have a whole video on that recently. 
Um, and then a user rule is basically just a memory of how this particular user likes to operate. And you can edit those and change those as you go. The other nice addition in 1.0 is a one-click install and OAuth support for MCPs. As you'll know, MCPs are just a really great way to add extra functionality to our coding agents. So it means cursor, windsurf, or Claude, etc., can plug in to use a whole load of different tools that help us develop faster with AI. And traditionally, they've been a bit of a pain to get set up and installed, but Cursor are trying to solve this with a one-click install and then OAuth support. So Cursor seem to have set up their own repository around doing this. It's quite limited at the moment, but let's take a look. So if you go to docs.cursor.com slash tools, you'll see a list of MCPs that you can add on. So you just basically go and click on any of these and it will ask you to authenticate against whatever provider that is, whether it's a GitHub or Notion. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So when you click on the button, it takes you straight over to Cursor and then I just hit install and then it goes to set it up here. And then I've already done this, but it'll go and ask you to authenticate as well. And the same with with GitHub. And now you'll see all the tools that are available. It called the MCP to create a pages. It tried a couple of different IDs. It did a search and eventually it created the page in the right place, which was actually pretty cool. I don't know how useful this is to me right now, but maybe I have a use case for this in the future. I also set up the GitHub MCP and asked it, could it list all the pull requests? And then it went through calling all the various different tools and then came back with the various different repositories. In reality, I could probably do this in a couple of clicks really fast myself. But what you have to think about here is we're moving to a state where we want the agents to do this asynchronously. So even though I can do this right now a little bit faster myself, we want to get into the mindset of training, setting up rules, and getting workflows in place so that our agents can work without us. It's kind of like the adage of you know managing a team. You think, oh, I could just do this a whole lot faster myself and better if I just go and do it. But in that way, you're not actually training, setting up the rules and setting up the workflows and the scaffolding for your team to do a really good job. Now, just a quick note on tool limits. You'll notice that with MCPs, once you go past around 40 tools, it really starts to break down and the model can't keep a context or an idea of what is possible to call. So I'm hoping that's going to be a solved problem sometime soon. There's some really cool startups like Gentic and Pika that are working specifically on this problem called just-in-time tooling. It's a way to get around the problem of having way too many tools for your model to keep context of, and then also these kind of workflows that sit on top. Essentially means we could tap into every existing legacy API out there without the need for MCPs. So that's pretty interesting and worth keeping an eye on. And the chat interface now gives us the ability to see mermaid diagrams alongside tables and other generated content outside of just text. This is a really big jump to go from 0.5 all the way up to one. This feels more like an announcement that they're enterprise ready and to be taken seriously in that regard. They've done a lot to improve their UX, their documentation and the developer experience, and they seem to be listening. Albeit, I think there's a lot of improvement in terms of documentation to be done yet. Something I also saw added in this release was the Slack integration, but I couldn't find any documentation anywhere about how to get that set up to demo it. Okay, so enough talk. The future isn't going to build itself. It's probably going to be done by AI agents. So come join us in the community if you're serious about building your future and the future of the web with AI.